Julie, you told an amazing story, and it's, it's a total masterpiece of, no, of Mark and the family and everything that happened. I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing film. Thanks so much. And Jim and Mary, watching you guys, I was like crying watching this. How could you not cry? Yeah, every time huh? we watch it, we, we laugh, we cry. Your son was an amazing person. He was an amazing what he did and who he was. Yeah, I, you know, the way that the film got started was back in 2016. I was a fan of Mark's and watched his YouTube videos, watched him out, you know, walking barefoot to protest climate change and just really connected with his sense of humor. Like he brought a whole different perspective from like a performance art kind of perspective to the struggle for uh, a better planet. And so uh, I was watching the videos and connecting on that level. And then when he was killed on the walk, I was just devastated, even though I never met him before. And I reached out to Jim and Mary and said, I want to make a documentary that, you know, tells Mark's life story and really gives audiences a sense of what he was fighting for. No doubt. Uh, Julie, how did you piece this together with, I mean, you have a stack of all the footage you got and all the rights and permission and everything. And and the families, I mean, seriously, it's a masterpiece puzzle you put together. Oh, thanks so much, you know, and I direct and edit, edit as well. So it's a lot of footage, you know, you're making a 90 minute movie, but you've got maybe a hundred hours to work with, to whittle down. And, you know, Mark was very prolific as an artist, as a filmmaker himself. Uh, he had 500 YouTube videos on his channel and just, tons and tons of hours he filmed about seven hours of himself walking barefoot you know he didn't have a crew he was just pointing his iphone you know kind of situation um so to go through all of that and then with the interviews from his friends and family it took longer than it took to to shoot the film for sure jim and mary how can we with this huge sacrifice how can we remember Mark more? What can we do more for, for, for Mark and this film? I, I think Mark cared deeply about the environment. So his, his focus on this walk was raising awareness around climate change, but he also was part of a, uh, a collective in Providence or Rhode Island called the Fan Collective, which was, stands for Fighting Against Natural Gas. So they oppose fracking. They oppose a lot of uh, environmentally devastating forms of energy extraction, including natural gas. And so, you know, Mark kind of felt like he wanted to be part of that. And I think what Mark did, what ingratiated him quickly to the group, is he didn't come in like a lot of activists do with all of the answers. He just said, you know what, whatever you want me to do, you know, I think it was a three day walk to Burrville, which is a neighboring town to uh, talk about the uh, natural gas plant that was being planned to be built there and they kind of it was kind of like guerrilla theater they were marching and singing and and doing different activities along the way and you know I think that was really who Mark was and he was a committed activist he was a poet um, I think he really believed in in sort of doing the doing piece of it there's a lot of folks who talk Mark was a doer we could do more talk less. Mark was a doer and um, one of the, I teared up about seven different times in this film and one part that got to me was all the different collage photos of his feet with the progression. I had an idea, I'm sure you've gotten tons of ideas, but that could be made into a poster for, you know, for charity or something because his feet are such a story in itself. They are. Every time we would talk to them, we would always say, but how are your feet? How are your feet holding up? And when he went to Florida, right, um, I believe that it was the day before he was killed, I talked to him and I said, and how are your feet, Mark? And he goes, my feet are the strongest they've ever felt on this walk. So, yeah, his feet went through a lot. Yeah. And, and one thing this the film doesn't really cover is that 
Mark was studying up on the barefoot lifestyle, barefoot running as, you know, a, a better way to run. It's better for your feet. You know, some people believe, and he read the book Born to Run. That's all about that, that barefoot running culture. So we didn't go into that in the film, uh, but that was part of his thinking. Yeah, that really struck me hard. Uh, I'm a runner, by the way, and um, um, I can't walk across this carpet right now without stepping on a tiny rock and going, ow. And, and I was like amazed at how his feet adapted to his walk. He, he walked slash ran over 700 miles barefoot on this journey. And, you know, when he, at the time when he was killed, his feet were doing better than ever. I mean, they had kind of hardened and grew the calluses necessary to, he, he, he definitely could have made it across the country. Uh, I don't think his feet would have been the problem. Oh, I don't think so either. And um, let's give credit to him on the way he filmed everything, the way he set up shots and, and it was just some great filmmaking by Mark as well, uh, or raising awareness. No, I mean, Mark had a performance artist mindset I, I, that he brought to this walk. You know, there were times that he was certainly in this sort of character. You know, I think there are still, there will be people who will watch it and not quite get it. You know what I mean? It, it'll be like, why is he doing that, right? And yet you recognize there are times that Mark is, he's in character, he's out of character. Sometimes you don't really know when he's in character and when he's not, you know? it's kind of the fun part of, 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 for me, watching him and saying, yeah, okay. And I'm kind of thinking what's behind this, like what was motivating him? Like he's got this little, this one spot where he's having this dialogue with himself on the bridge. And then he kind of like puts himself down like, oh, Mark, you know, just, you know, it's just funny how he can do that in a way that, and there's a, there's something to that. You know, I, I've noticed that, with people, sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll, I'll do this sometimes with people like, you know, I'll be talking to them and I'll kind of be having fun with them and they don't get it, you know, and it's like, I'm like, and they think I'm serious and, and I, you know, and that's kind of how Mark was, you know, and it's, it's just really kind of intriguing how he used humor in, in this sort of very guerrilla fashion almost, you know. Well, Mark was a true entertainer. I mean, and by the way, I'm holding it right here, the film, like right here. Like, I just can't wait to tell people like, you gotta watch this. Climate change is the existential threat of our time. You know, if we don't have a planet to live on, we're not gonna be here anymore. So I think Mark's journey, you might say, it, it seems absurd to walk barefoot across the country. What's that gonna do for climate change? But it really just did this kind of performance art, metaphorical way embodies this kind of existential threat that's that sort of life and death energy that is climate change is you know he took on an existential risk when walking barefoot um and the urgency of what he was doing i think you can really feel that when you watch the movie you know i set myself up for a lot of pain in this film because when i'm watching by the way i knew nothing about it and i'm watching it and i'm like i want to meet mark i want to meet mark you know, I want to meet, I want to talk to him. And then I'm like, it hit me like, I'm like, no, no. You know, like just, it, 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 it got me. Great. Every time I watch it, um, it makes me want to be a better person. Mark speaks from the big screen. He does. And you know, one thing that got me in the film as well, one thing, I mean, it was like I said, it was like a hundred things that got me, but everyone that stopped, you want a pair of shoes, you want food, you want a ride. It was like all the good people that are running, like, like he was 80% of the people are, are great people on earth. I think Mark, I, I'm a cynic by nature. Mark was the opposite. You know, I would say the good people of the aberration, Mark would say, no dad, actually there are more good people. And I think this walk revealed that, although bad people, can cause a great deal of har damage and harm. So that woman that hit and killed Mark, uh, pretty much, you know, no, could easily have destroyed our lives. You know, I wouldn't say they she's destroyed our lives because I wouldn't give her that much credit. But the reality is, it was very, very difficult for the first. I mean, it's three and a half years. You, you know, I think of Mark every day. I don't have a time each day where I don't think of something about Mark and just miss him every single day. 
and that'll be that way until I'm gone, you know, and he, I'm very close. I was very close to him. Mary was very close to him. He was very, um, you know, uh, as, as, a, as a son, you know, adult son being wanting to be with his parents, he made an effort to spend time with us. Mary competed in a national triathlon back in August 2016 in Omaha, Nebraska. And Mark was out in British Columbia with his girlfriend at the time, Otta. And he basically cut short his time with her to come to Omaha and be with us. And it was really special spending time with him, you know. Uh, but it was always that thing. We were always there for each other. A unit of three, we called ourselves. And now we're we're down to two, you know, and it's hard. It's hard being without Mark because he was really central to that, that you know, trifecta of bombers. All right, you guys. Well, Julie, amazing job editing it, shooting it. And same with Mark. And Jim and Mary, I just completely respect you guys. And uh, I'm going to get the word out. And we got to do something about climate change. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Fernando. Have a good day. Actually, before we go, I did want to say um, a couple months after Mark was killed, we set up a nonprofit, the Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund.org. We're doing good things, Mark's name. So check, check us out. Okay, cool. I'll put it on the link on our stuff as well. Thank you. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Jim. Take Thank you so much. All right, bye. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, too.